Listener Production. Welcome to the Motorsport Brief. It's Thursday, the 24th of August, 2023. There is a serious silly season, as we call it, musical chairs happening in supercars with possibly the biggest amount of driver movement for 2024 that we've seen in a long time. Today, a comeback story. A wonderful yarn of a driver with a huge amount of talent who left disenchanted, but he is back with a team that's building and he's ready to give his second coming everything he's got. G'day everybody, Greg Rust with you for this edition of the Rusty's Garage Shortcast. We have launched our bid for another 100 feature episodes after the recent milestone. A second tonne, if you like. And it was Michael Caruso who helped us start that process. My old Speed Series TV colleague was in great form. From a special moment driving his dad's sports sedan a lesser-known story where he made the difficult decision not to renew his race licence for a while when he couldn't see a future as a professional race driver. Plus, the fashion choice to try and impress Gary Rogers when he went for the big interview for a supercars drive full-time with GRM. Lots of fun in that chat. Today on the short cast, another piece of the puzzle as the supercars grid for next season takes shape. A driver who reminded us of his speed in a wildcard comeback at Bathurst with Greg Murphy last year. Someone who we thought was a front-running option for Shane Van Gisbergen's seat with Red Bull is, in fact, heading for Grove Racing as a replacement for David Reynolds. He kind of ended his first chapter in supercars disillusioned, went away, did some soul-searching, found the mojo again, and is reinvigorated and ready to get stuck in. Richie Stanaway, welcome to Rusty's Garage. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Hey, this is fantastic news, mate. Can we rewind the clock a little bit here and just understand how you must feel right now? Because we had two cracks in COVID at trying to get that wild card drive happening. Thankfully, it finally happened with with Boost and Erebus. And now here you are. You're going to be back as a full-time driver in, in 2024. Is there a bit of... Uh, you know, a moment where you've sat back and thought, yes, this is actually happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, um, yeah, I've worked really hard over the last couple of years to get to this point. So, um, yeah, just really grateful that it's all sort of come together and um, I guess pretty proud of myself really for the work that I put in uh, to, to get to a point where I feel confident enough to come back and race full time. Uh, because yeah, it was it was no light task, that's for sure. But um, yeah, just really keen to see how we get on in the enduros, and then obviously just can't wait to uh, crack on with Penrite next year. I sense from the message that you and I had offline that you are ready to give this a really serious crack. Tell me about that and and how motivated you are, and so on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just want to see what I'm capable of doing with the right group of people. And um, I guess I've had a bit of a chance to reflect over what went wrong during my first two full seasons. And at the start of either of those seasons, I never went into it confident that we would be able to get results. And um, that's very, very different this time. So uh, yeah, I don't really know what it's like to, um, you know, go into a season with an organization that's preparing themselves to win. Um, so to come in as a driver in that environment is very new to me. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's very exciting to, uh, that prospect is, is very, very exciting. And yeah, I feel like it's going to get the most out of me and yeah, I'll try to do my best to, to get the most out of the team as well. And I'm just really excited to see what we can achieve together. Tell me a little bit. Don't go. Uh, don't go too deep, mate. But obviously, you've had to compartmentalise that 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 first stint as as Richie Stanaway in supercars. And I, I can tell here that, as I said, that you're really um, pumped about this opportunity for for take two or Richie Stanaway Mark two. How have you framed that that whole period, mate? Is it is it stuff that you know that you'll be you'll be different at and better at this time? To be honest, I feel like that first stint was in another lifetime. Really? Uh, yeah, it just feels so, I feel so different as a person. And uh, I think that's why I'm keen to come back and give it another crack. 
Mm. Fitness has obviously been a big part of that. Um, how have you sort of prepared yourself beyond uh, the, the car for for this, mate? I mean, obviously you've had to um, get your mindset into a into a place where you're you're comfortable and ready to. Yeah, I mean that's that's been a massive part of it for me. Um, I was very committed to training when I was younger on a path towards F1 because yeah, it's just well known that uh, those cars are, are very physical. And also I always wanted to give myself an edge whenever it came to a decision between myself and another driver. So yeah, we would go to training camps once every quarter and we would be given a fitness test. And if I knew I was going there with, with 20 other drivers, I wanted to either be the fittest or show that I'd made the most improvement because I needed every edge that I possibly could get. So I felt like I was very committed in, in those younger years. Um, and then I think when I came to the realization that I wasn't going to make it to F1, it just really sort of knocked the wind out of, out of my sails a bit when it came to the fitness training. And then combining that with driving cars that aren't as physical as, as an F1 car, it, it was just, I guess, an easy opportunity for me to back off a bit. Uh, and I probably took that a little bit too far, not realizing that, I guess, for the fitness, it's, it's more about just the lifestyle and the type of person you, you need to be if, in order to be really fit. And that's kind of more what you need to line up with being a successful racing driver. Not so much, you know, if, if you're driving an F1 car or, or a touring car. Mm. So I kind of overlooked that. And um, also coming back to do the wild card. Uh, yeah, when I stopped racing supercars in 2019, I wasn't in the best shape. And then I also didn't really do anything for a couple of years. So then when I initially got the call up to do the wild card, there was a, just a massive gap in, I guess, my physical condition and what I, what I needed to for that, where I needed to be for that wild card. And yeah, I mean, because when, when you're not driving a lot, you need to prepare a lot more and almost overcompensate because the just the stress levels are a bit higher when you when you've not been racing a lot so you mm. need to overcompensate massively and yeah i wanted to to come back and do well so i was very committed in in the lead up to bathurst and um it's it sort of for me i guess reignited a passion for cycling um uh and it sort of got to a point where i you know when I wasn't sure if I would ever race again, I almost sort of picked up cycling as as a whole other sport on its own. And the, I guess the two bikes in the background behind me are a bit of a giveaway. But <laughs> And then I, I sort of just headed down that path of almost using that sport to replace what I wasn't getting anymore from from being a racing driver. driver. Mm. And then I feel like the physical and the, the mental strength that I've gained from that sport have just, I guess put me into a place where I feel like almost over prepared when I go to a race now, uh, which is gives me a lot of confidence uh, that, you know, I can now go to a race and feel like I'm really prepared. And, and that's obviously not something I ever had in my, in my earliest stint in supercars. How much did you think about the offer when Peter Adderton called and, and take us back to that moment where the wild card was put on the table in front of you and on your first reaction? Initially, I wasn't that keen because I was pretty determined to just obviously step away from the sport altogether and, and not come back. But um, it didn't take me too long. It probably only took me a couple of days to kind of just, uh, I guess, wrap my head around the idea of coming back and then driving with Greg and also driving at a, a team that I hadn't driven at before. It's all kind mm. of exciting and, and interesting to to come back and do it. And um yeah, obviously, I could never have imagined that it would lead to what it's led to. I mean, there's, a, I guess, there was always a small part in the back of my mind during the, you know, the lead up, which ended up being two years with the delay yep. of uh, coming back full time. But 
um, yeah, and obviously put in a lot of work and it's, I guess, nice to know that it, it did end up leading to, uh, I guess the best possible outcome. Um, and that all that work was, was worth it. Cool. In the stepping stone of the process that's ultimately led you to Grove in the middle is a thing now called Red Bull Ampole Racing and you getting to pair with Shane in the Enduros and stuff. When did the idea of you working with those guys come about? Ironically, it was straight after Garth announced he was going to Tenrite Racing. Yep. So that's um, that's what kicked it all off. So okay. as soon as that announcement came out, then, yeah, within a couple of days, um yeah, the, the discussions started, um, yeah, I mean, predominantly led by Shane, I guess. But Shane was keen to drive with me mm. and, yeah, it'll just sort of stem from there. How has the year been with that outfit? You've been doing some uh, stuff up in, in Asia and with their GT program as well. How much, how good has that been for you so far this year? Yeah, it's it's been everything that I'd hoped for. Uh, getting uh, an inside look into the most successful organization in the category is yeah it's what every driver that races in supercars dreams of Mm. obviously it wasn't in a full-time capacity but with the test days i've had so far and then the enduros coming up plus the gt program it's still been yeah fairly full-on program and uh yeah you just you just can't put a price on on how valuable it is to to be inside of that organization and to, I guess, um, see why you've been beaten so many <laughs> times before, um, you know. And uh, you walk into the into the workshop and you see all of the trophies, and then you get five minutes into your first board meeting, and and the penny drops, and you sort of realize, oh, okay, this is this is why we've been beaten so much <laughs> in the past. So, to uh, to be on the inside like that has just been incredible and. I've really, really been enjoying it. Give us your impressions of the Gen 3 car. Obviously, Shane's on record as, as um, you know, feeling like he's he's struggled with the beast at, at, at times or perhaps hasn't enjoyed it. Maybe that's the better set of words. How have you found it and how, how are you looking forward to the Enduros? To be honest, I've really been enjoying it. Um, I guess for me, I've got a pretty fresh perspective on it all and it's it's a, a, also a big part of, the reason why I'm, I'm keen to come back full time because it's, it's addressed a lot of the issues that I struggled with in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, things like the engine lotteries and, uh, taking away a lot of the, um, the scope for design and, and, and a lot of the parts, uh, that, you know, when you race with it, with smaller teams mm-hmm. on lower budgets, it's not that fun <laughs> to, um, to know that you turn up to the track and even if you, get everything perfect if you nail the tire pressures you get a good car balance you're probably not going to win on that Mm. day you know Mm. whereas the with the gen 3 car i guess it's um yeah just it's just seems a lot more interesting to me and uh yeah the car's fun to drive it's still very much got all of that supercar dna and um yeah it's just it's an interesting challenge uh obviously the steering rack needs to be fixed but um yeah the timing should work out for me like i'm sure they'll probably have that fixed by next year so it's pro- probably not been all bad you know being out mm-hmm. on the, on the sidelines for for the year not ideal but um obviously that this year will give them the time to Line fix a lot of mm. of the issues yeah yeah but um yeah i've been enjoying the car it's been fun to drive Cherno colleagues in the early part of this silly season discussion thought you were the man perhaps most likely to to take over from Shane. I don't know what you can or, or uh, are comfortable with sharing, mate. Um, but obviously you've you've ended up at at, at Groves. Um, can you you know tell us a bit about that process? How you've how you've landed there and and um, why you've gone that path? Yeah, so they reached out after SMP and. Yeah, it all sort of came together really quickly, and um, the the more I looked into it, I just sort of couldn't see, couldn't find anything other than green flags, mm-hmm. and um, just with the people that they've they've recruited and just the way they're going about everything, I just yeah was just more and more impressed the more I looked into it, and it just sort of felt right to me. 
So I just, I just had a gut feeling and, and yeah, I've, I've gone with that gut feeling and yeah, I think it's, it should hopefully uh, work out well. Awesome. They're on the build, aren't they? I mean, with the people that they have acquired, with the attention to detail around the, the cars and, and the lineup of drivers for that matter. Um, the Groves do enjoy some international competition as well. Is there scope here for you to perhaps do a little bit of that or is it purely just supercars that you're going to focus on here? Yeah, I hope so. I've been enjoying the GT racing this year. Uh, it's not something I'd like to do full time. That's why I'm obviously pleased to um, to get the supercar gig so mm. I can focus more on that than, than what I have been able to do this year. But to do it on the side, I think is is really fun. Mm. Um, you know, GT racing has its issues as well with uh, BOP and it, they're not the best cars to race because of the amount of downforce you lose when you're following. But yeah, in terms of just driving the car around the track and going to some cool race tracks and um, yeah, getting just staying race fit, I think is they're, they're really useful for that. We'll get Richie to stick around with us a little bit longer. We'll be back in just a few moments. You're listening to the Motorsport Brief, a short cast offering in Rusty's Garage, which is new for 2023. Today, Richie Stanaway is chatting with us from New Zealand following the news that he is returning full-time to supercars next year. Are you setting yourself a little objective? Are you the kind that perhaps won't go into this this second running at supercars with a you know a clearly defined list of goals? What what is your sort of target if there is one, Richie, going into twenty twenty four? I think the target is is to win. Uh, I think yeah, both Penrite Racing and myself are very clear about that. Uh, yeah, we we don't want to be making up the numbers, and we'll, we'll be doing everything we can to win and uh if we're coming short of that then neither of us will be will be happy so uh that's what the target is and we're both going to be pushing to achieve that good on you all right final one for you the the shorter term objective is pairing up with svg um and the enduros from what you've experienced so far and and between now and and those races how confident are you yeah, I mean, uh, I'm excited to drive with Shane. Uh, there's still a lot that I can learn from him. Uh, there's only so much I can learn from the test days, uh, but uh, to actually go in now and, and race with him, I think there's a lot that I can absorb from him before he goes off to the US and uh, obviously working with the team in a race environment as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to see how we can go. He's second in the championship with two of the highest available points uh, coming up in the next two races. So if we have a good run through, then yeah, there's obviously we've got the, his championship to think about. And yeah, just feeling uh, up to the task in, in, terms of, in terms of doing my role. And um, yeah, just really excited to, to get through it all. All right. Uh, you're in the sim as you talk to us today. How much have you been enjoying doing that? <laughs> You love the sim, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I've sort of, um, I've had sort of uh, been a bit on the fence with it in, in the recent past, not trying to spend too much time on it. But now that I know that I'm coming back full time, I'm I've really ramped up the hours that I'm putting in on it, um, and obviously that'll continue over the next few years. So, um, yeah, I've actually got some um, some sand down testing scheduled for the rest of the day with Shane because we're doing a virtual sand down 500 on the weekend so um yeah we'll we'll be testing in, into the late hours of the night i'm sure i won't hold you up from that thank you very much for talking to us today grab this opportunity with both hands we know that you will um we're excited that you're back in the sport on a on a full-time basis and that you've you've got this um this opportunity richie and uh, we hope it goes well for you thank you for talking to us today cool thanks rusty Love to know what you think. Can he come back bigger and better than ever as Grove Racing continues its impressive build toward being a regular, serious title contending outfit? While we're on that team, they have announced that Garth Tander will pair with Dave Reynolds for the great race, while international Porsche driver Kevin Estra comes in to join young Kiwi Matt Payne in their other car. 
Craig Lowndes has inked a new deal with Triple Eight, which enables the sport's modern-day hero to continue with the team's wildcard program through to 2025. The new two-year deal means he will have been with the squad for over two decades. Next year represents a 20-year milestone for Lowndes together with Triple Eight. Cool story. Bit of movement in IndyCar with Marcus Ericsson switching next year from Chip Ganassi to Andretti Autosport. Colleagues at motorsport.com reporting a fallout between Ericsson and Chip Ganassi over Marcus's salary relative to other drivers in the Ganassi stable. Former F1 driver Romain Grosjean may have an uphill battle now to find a drive next year as the grid for IndyCar takes shape. Well done to Hayden Patton, who's won the European Rally Championship. The former factory Hyundai driver, who is based out of Cromwell in New Zealand and has worked hard to stitch international opportunities together post-COVID while pioneering the development of an electric rally car. Patton and co-driver John Kennard are the first non-Europeans to win that crown. Massive congrats to Jet Lawrence. The Aussies win in the penultimate round of the AMA Pro Motocross at Buds Creek in the US marked his 20th consecutive moto win and 10th round win, having clinched the championship the week before. That is mega. We've got to get him on. F1 roars back into life this weekend after the summer break for the Dutch round at Zandvoort. That's a nice little segue to let you know that another feature ep drops next Tuesday with Louise Goodman, the F1 reporter who worked with Murray Walker, James Allen and more on the coverage all those years ago, as well as doing PR for the likes of Eddie Jordan, working with drivers like Martin Brundle, Eddie Irvine and more. Some very cool stories there, including interviewing the cast of Ocean's Eleven on the grid at Monaco. You'll enjoy it. Our thanks to Link Kelly for the quick turnaround of this one and our gun producer, Tom Dullard, as well. We will catch you next week, everyone. Bye for now.